Edgar Livingston Kennedy was an American comedic character actor who appeared in at least 500 films during the silent and sound eras. Professionally, he was known as Slow Burn, owing to his ability to portray on-screen characters whose anger slowly rises in frustrating situations. Times hungry after driving all night, but I can't see any reason for all the rush. We have our own trailer. We don't have to look for a cabin. You don't understand. The season opens tomorrow, and I want to find a nice shady spot. <laughs> like the one you found last year. We woke up in the morning and found ourselves in the middle of a bridal path. <laughs> I'll never forget the time you picked up the black cap with the white stripes on it and tried to bet it. <laughs> Get a listen to me. We'd have been there by now. You fathead. Now, 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 Edgar, please. We're going to have a nice vacation. Let me out of here. Let him off live. I'm crossing a narrow bridge. Kennedy, in many of his roles, used exasperated facial expressions, performed very deliberately, to convey his rising anger or burn often rubbing his hand over his bald head and across his face in an effort to control his temper. One memorable example of his slow burn comedy technique can be seen in the 1933 Marx Brothers film Duck Soup in which he plays a sidewalk lemonade vendor who is harassed and increasingly provoked. Kennedy was born on April 26, 1890, in Monterey County, California to Canadians Neil Kennedy and Annie Quinn. He attended San Rafael High School before taking up boxing. He was a light heavyweight and once went 14 rounds with Jack Dempsey. After boxing, he worked as a singer in vaudeville, musical comedy and light opera. attention please. Men, you are about to embark upon careers which I hope and truly believe will be the turning points in your lives. And now, what is the greatest vacuum cleaner on the market today? Dandy! All together now. Dandy knows no dirt. Dandy knows no crime. Dandy leaves the house in just one half of the time. Dandy, Dandy, rah, rah, rah. Dandy, Dandy, sis, boom, rah. Hey, Dandy. Now go on out there, boys, and justify my confidence in you. And remember our slogan, nothing will stop the man who will stop at nothing. Come on, boys, snap into it. You too, Kennedy. Yeah. Making his debut in 1911, Kennedy performed with some of the biggest film comedians in the United States, including Roscoe Arbuckle, Charlie Chaplin, Laurel and Hardy, the Marx Brothers, Charlie Chase, and the Our Gang series. Over against that wall. Oh, you two. Yes. 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 Be quick about it. Anybody makes a false move, I'll plug him. Right, Alex. You must have more money than that. Where is it? No, that's all I've got. You're lying. Tell me where you got it hidden or I'll blow your brains out. Oh, I'm not lying, Alice. Friends, don't let him shoot me, please. Don't hurry, Mr. Berg, but he's our only means of support. Yeah. You mean he was. Make a sucker out of me. Turn around, you big lug. I want to watch your face when I drill you. Oh, don't shoot me. I'm too young to die. <laughs> Joe Cassie, what are you doing here? Why, I came to see you, of course. Oh, oh how's the oh, little lady? Down. <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, you remember me uh, Mumber Mit uh, remember Mother, don't you? <laughs> Why, certainly. How do you do? By George Florence, I made a big mistake in letting you get away from me. <laughs> Maybe it's not too late yet. <laughs> oh, Joe, you forget I'm married to Edgar. Yeah, you call that being married? Uh, just a moment, Cassidy. 
Well, looks like the old boy's gonna put up a fight for his lady. Yeah. <laughs> you weren't so brave a few months ago when you thought I was a burglar. I'll say he wasn't the big baby. Uh, I just didn't want to spoil your little joke. I knew who you were all the time. Oh, you did, did you? <laughs> In 1930, Edgar Kennedy was featured by RKO Pathy in a pair of short subject comedies, Next Door Neighbors and Help Wanted Female. English. Huntershire County, Huntershire, England. Can you cook? Yes, ma'am. Well, take this card to Dr. Foster. Sign right there. Yes, ma'am. Right. No ink. Adult, open your mouth. That's a good boy. Mrs. Arias, open. Emmy, wait. Nick, Nick, remember you're working with a gentleman burglar. Huh? Say, if you harm me just once more today, I'm gonna knock your... Uh, uh, huh? Ma'am, is the doctor in? Yes. Two gentlemen to see you, dear. Show them in. Kennedy's characterization of a short-tempered householder was so effective that RKO built a series around it. The Average Man comedies starred Kennedy as a blustery, stubborn guy determined to accomplish a household project or get ahead professionally. Oh, darling. Yes, Edgar. Isn't breakfast ready yet? Edgar, dear, you know I love you very much. But if you ask me that question again, I think I'll scream. I just hate to be late. It's bad for discipline and system at the office. If you start that again, I know I'll scream. No, no, no. Don't get excited, darling. Oh, I'm not excited, but everything's been so upset this morning. And now you, you start picking. I'm not picking on you, honey, and things wouldn't be upset if you'd use a little system in running your house. Oh, so you don't like the way I run the house? I didn't say that. Do you realize how much there is to be done around here? Mm-hmm, just exactly. Oh, you do? Well, what? Well, you gotta get up and get a little breakfast ready, and make a couple of beds, and tidy up the house a bit. If you use a little system, you'd have it all done in an hour. In an hour? And what about the dirty dishes? The cleaning, the sweeping, the scrubbing, the washing, the ironing, the mending. A million things that you think about. Will you listen to me while I'm talking to you? 
firm, Leslie. I'm just trying to figure out how long it would take me to do it. Well, just about how long would it take you? Oh, about an hour. An hour and a half at the most. <laughs> you make me laugh. You're thinking about that office of yours where you sit with your feet on your desk all day and bully that poor stenographer. I don't bully my stenographer. Well, at least you do get around to see people, do things, move around. Here I am, stuck in this place day and night, like a slave tied to a windmill. A treadmill. A slave chained to a treadmill. Well, that's what I am. What, treadmill? Yes. No. A slave. That's all I do around this house. Slave. What do you think I do at the office? The office. <laughs> Child play. Each installment would end with Edgar embarrassed, humbled or defeated, looking at the camera and doing his patented slow burn. Despite the meddling of his feather-brained wife, usually Florence Lake, her freeloading brother, originally William Eugene, then Jack Rice, and his dubious mother-in-law, Dot Farley, Kennedy pioneered the kind of domestic situation comedy that later became familiar on television. Kennedy became so identified with frustration that practically every studio hired him to play hotheads. He often played dumb cops, detectives, and even a prison warden. Sometimes he was a grouchy moving man, truck driver, or blue-collar workman. His character usually lost his temper at least once. Perhaps his most unusual roles were as a puppeteer in the detective mystery The Falcon Strikes Back, and as a philosophical bartender inspired to create exotic cocktails in Harold Lloyd's last film, The Sin of Harold Diddlebach 1947. He also played comical detectives opposite two titans of acting, John Barrymore in 20th Century 1934 and Rex Harrison in Unfaithfully Years 1948. In the latter film he tells Harrison's character. A symphony conductor, nobody handles handle like you handle handle. Kennedy died of throat cancer at the Motion Picture Hospital, San Fernando Valley on the 9th November 1948. His body was interred at the Holy Cross Cemetery, Culver City, Los Angeles County, California. One of the most beloved foils of Stan Laurel and Oliver Hardy was Old Slow Burn, a man whose face rarely showed a trace of a smile on screen. Kennedy was jovial and friendly in real life, talking to the man on the street as though they were best friends. Who will be able to forget the city-splitting laughter they endured when Laurel and Hardy proceeded with their unintentional vendetta against Edgar's gouty foot in the perfect day? Among the best and most frequently seen characters in the Laurel and Hardy films, Edgar Kennedy was responsible for a good deal of the merriment and hilarity that runs rampant through the Laurel and Hardy films.